All right, so welcome to part 18 of Learn Go. And in this video, we're going to be going over structs. So if you're coming from a programming background in C, C++, or Java, you've most likely dealt with structs on some level or are familiar with the concept of what a struct is. If you're coming from a background like Python, though, I don't believe structs are part of the language, so this might be a foreign concept to you. I guess the best way to loosely think about a struct is it's very similar to what is offered from a class. A more formal definition of a struct comes from Wikipedia, and this is the first sentence of the article from the struct article on Wikipedia. It says, a struct is a composite data type or record declaration that defines a physically grouped list of variables to be placed under one name in a block of memory, allowing the different variables to be accessed via a single pointer or the struct declared name, which returns the same address. So that definition is maybe a little bit hard to follow or abstract, especially if without an example, if you've not seen a struct before, more I guess loosely, a struct is really just a typed collection of fields, and they're generally useful for grouping data together to form records. So we'll go ahead and define a struct in Go, and hopefully in doing so, making use of this struct, the definition will become a little bit more transparent. So let's go ahead and define a struct up here above main. So we'll say type, and then we'll give this struct a name. In this video, we're going to be defining a struct of type employee. So we'll give it the name employee, and then we'll use the struct keyword. So within the struct, we're going to define a number of records or fields associated with this employee struct that are going to be related to an employee. So for instance, we can have a first name, every employee has a first name, and this data type in this employee struct will be of type string, last name, string, and maybe an employee has an ID. So we'll say the ID in this case is an integer. So let's move on down to main and let's define some variables from our employee struct. So first let's go ahead and print line employee and then let's go ahead and define in a specific employee. So we'll explicitly say first name and we'll set this equal to our first employee. Let's say Homer, last name Simpson, and then ID 1. So if we go ahead and save that, let me clear the screen. And then let me say go run 18 underscore structs dot go. If we do that, we get this output here, which is a variable based on our employee struct data type. And then we have the first name, the last name, and the ID here. So we can actually define a employee in a less verbose way than we did here. If we omit these things here that say first name, last name and ID, and if we just feed in the arguments in the order in which they're defined within the struct, Go will figure out what order to place those and where those correspond to the fields in this employee struct. So for instance, we can say something similar to this. Let me just copy this line, print it down here. Let me omit saying first name. Let's actually change this to a different employee. We'll say Waylon. We'll remove this last name here, and we'll change this one to Smithers. And then we'll change the ID let's say to two. So if we go ahead and save that, print it out, we get another struct variable here with a first name, last name, and an ID of two. And again, we just omitted these explicit mentions of what these correspond to in this employee uh, definition here. So we just omitted that. So it's a little bit less verbose. So one thing to mention too, is that if we omit any one of these fields from the employee struct, if we omit them when we define an employee variable, then what Go is going to do is it's just going to fill that in with the zero value of whatever that data type is for that field. So if you recall in the video that we did on arrays, we declared an array of type int. Let's say we declared an array of size five of type int. If we didn't set any of the values for any of the slots in that array to anything, Go would initialize each of those five slots to the zero value. So in the case of an integer array, each of those slots would be initialized to zero. If we declared, let's say, an array of size five of type Boolean, then those five slots would be initialized to false, a string, empty string. So if you don't specify any one of these parameters in Go for struct, Go will go ahead and just omit that and just fill in the zero value for whatever that field is. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of that. Let's say format.println, and then we'll say employee. And then here we'll say first name, we'll say Frank, and then last name, Grimes. 
And if we omit the ID, then what Go is going to do is it's just going to fill that ID in with zero. So let's go ahead and save that and run it. So we see that the last thing printed out here, we have the first name, last name, and then since we didn't specify, not specify an ID, the ID was just initialized to zero. So we can also store the result of a struct into a variable. So we can say EMP colon equals, let's say employee, and then we'll define another employee here. We'll say first name, Montgomery, last name, Burns. And then we can also set Mr. Burns' ID to four. So one thing we can do once we've defined and stored this into a variable EMP is we can access the fields of this particular employee. So for instance, we can say format.println and we can say EMP.firstName. We can also do with the, the same with the other fields as well. So we can say EMP last name and EMP.ID. So if we do that, we're going to get the respective first name, last name, and ID of the EMP variable that we defined up here on line 29. Let's go ahead and save that and run it. So we see that we extract the first name, the last name, and the ID by using the dot operator. So say an EMP dot first name, dot last name, dot ID, dot whatever the name of the field is that we want to extract. So we can also assign, uh, we can define a pointer to a struct. So let's go ahead and define EMP pointer, and we'll set that equal to the reference of EMP. So this is now a pointer that points to this variable, which is a struct here. So if we go ahead and say format.println, let's say EMP underscore pointer dot first name, of course, we should get the first name of Montgomery, which is the same name as we got here when we just printed out EMP dot first name. And again, that's because we're defining a pointer to this EMP struct that we defined up above here, and that is just going to print out the same first name. So let's just go ahead and verify that's what it does. So when we print out the first name of the pointer that points to the EMP variable we defined for that employee, it prints out the same first name as we got here. So we can also update the field, let's say, in any struct using uh, via a pointer. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. So let's go ahead and try to update the first name in the struct via a pointer. So we'll say EMP pointer, we'll say dot first name is equal to Marge. So what we're doing here is, again, we've created this variable which is pointing to this EMP variable that we defined from the struct. And then we're setting the first name of that pointer to Marge. So if we go ahead and say format.println, and then we'll say emp.pointer, sorry, underscore pointer dot first name, we should see Marge. And then since we're pointing to the EMP variable, that the one that we have here on line 29, if we go ahead and say the same thing but remove this PTR, since we've changed the first name that this thing points to, this first name will also be reflected. So if we go ahead and run this here, notice that the first name of EMP is not also changed to Marge. So if that concept is a little strange, there's a video on pointers, a few videos back that you can check out that go over how to use pointers in Go if that concept is a little bit strange. So that pretty much does it for structs in Go. If there's any questions or comments or anything like that, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. The code here will be on my GitHub and that link will be in the description to this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.